Hello, this is John Stokes, the CEO of the Flexitalic Group. Today I'd like to share with you a presentation about a very important topic, eliminating hand injuries. I'm also trying a new communication method, which is recorded videos. We'll see how this goes, and we may use this as a tool going forward in 2019. I'd like to start by reminding you of our Flexitalic strategic plan, our mission, making the world safer and cleaner through engineered ceiling solutions. But most notably on the strategic plan, I'd like to point out our first value of safety, which is what this presentation is about. Why am I talking about hand safety and why are we going to have a special program on it? It's to create awareness and respect for the hazards associated with hand injuries and ultimately to eliminate hand injuries in 2019. Of course, we want to eliminate all injuries but I'm going to shortly show you some data that hand injuries account for nearly 50% of all injuries over the last four years and a growing percentage in the last two years. To achieve our goal of zero injuries and eliminating all hand injuries, it will require commitment from not only the management, but more importantly, from each individual employee of the Flexitalic Group. Here are some statistics safety for the Flexitalic group. Since the beginning of 2015, the group has had 54 recordable injuries. So that sounds like a large number. We have over a thousand employees around the world, and this is over a four year span. Compared to industry averages, you may say this is good performance. Compared to our goal of zero, it's not good performance. Out of the 54 injuries, 25 have been attributed to hand injuries. That's 46% since 2015, but 2018, 77% of our injuries have been hand injuries. So if we can focus on hand injuries and eliminate them, we can cut somewhere between 50% and 75% of all the injuries we have in the Flexitalic group and move much closer to achieving our goal of zero injuries. It's worth talking about the effects of hand injuries before we get into some of our other information. We use our hands constantly. A disabling injury can have a dramatic effect on your quality of life, not only on your job, but on your daily routines and your home life. It only takes a second for the injury to occur, but the social, financial, and emotional effects can last a lifetime. Types of hand injuries are numerous. Our hands are very versatile tools. They're exposed to many different types of risks. The examples are listed here, strains and sprains, repetitive motion, skin irritation, burns, chemicals, and hot substances. But I'd like to point out the last four in particular because these are the highest risk types at Flexitalic. Punctures from tools and other sharp, sharp objects, lacerations, broken bones from being crushed or falling, and amputations resulting in a loss or part of all of the hand. When talking about safety, specifically hand safety, management has a set of responsibilities. It is our responsibility to create a safe work environment for all employees, develop policies and procedures, make sure the proper equipment is available and the proper tools are available, train employees on the proper use of equipment and tools, train our employees on safety procedures and policies. We also need to audit the equipment, the procedures, and the behaviors, and provide coaching and corrective action. We need to follow up on near misses and injuries and implement corrective actions, and finally encourage open communication so we understand what's happening, what the risks are, and what we need to do to correct them. Every individual within the Flexitala group also has responsibilities. When it comes to hand safety, one of the most important things is to know where your hands are at all times, keeping them away from moving parts of machinery and points of operation. Another important responsibility is make sure guards are in place and used. If there's guarding that's missing on your piece of equipment, 
You need to report that to supervision immediately. Energy sources need to be isolated and equipment needs to be locked out before placing your hands in potential points of contact. Select the proper tools and equipment and protective equipment for the task you perform. Inspect them before you use them and make sure you use them only for their intended purposes. Maintain focus on your task. Repetitive tasks can lead to complacency and ultimately to injury. Communicate unsafe conditions and report all injuries to your supervisors. And do not compromise safety to save time or money. I realize that we have pressures to get production, to ship, ultimately to make money for the corporation, but we're not asking you to compromise your safety to accomplish any of these other objectives. We have done an analysis of the injuries that have occurred in the Flexitalic Group since 2015. We do an extensive cause analysis of every recordable injury, and that's given us a good set of data to look at. The corrective actions that are listed on the data I'm about to show you were to be completed by the site where the injury occurred and shared with all other sites to implement proactively. I'm gonna show you some charts that have the details of the cause types, corrective actions, grouped by different categories. A number of our injuries occurred on vertical winding machines. We are flexitalic, we make a lot of spiral wand gaskets and vertical winders and horizontal winders represent rotating equipment with sharp edges. So it is a risk for hand injury. The incident types we had were pinched fingers, crushed fingers, lacerated fingers. And the root causes, which are very similar root causes from a category standpoint to many of our injuries, procedures, PPE, risk assessment, engineering, training. Uh, these are themes you'll see throughout the analysis. The permanent corrective actions were listed uh, in the analysis that was done by each site. I'm not gonna go through each individual one. I will summarize the key takeaways after we go through these details. Horizontal winding incidents, not as many as on the verticals, but we did have two in this time. Similar types of injuries, pinched fingers and lacerations. The corrective actions, finger guarding, installed on all winding machines. We'll come back to that one. Again, PPE, the safe work area, and then the management reviewing risk assessments. We had a number of incidents related to setups or changeovers, six in this analysis. Again, you'll see similar types of causes, uh, some specific here, uh, the anti-slip tape flooring that's specific to one of these injuries. Light curtains where hands can access moving parts. We'll come back to that. Uh, ergonomics on lifting, Guarding once again comes up, PPE comes up, training, a common theme. Hand cutting operations, we had five incidents. This is where a, an individual is using a hand tool to cut something, often boxes, sometimes packing material, sometimes gasket material. But we had a number of those types of injuries similar types of causes, the work area organization, the blade, the type of blade being used, blade changing, training. So you can see these themes. And then we had three incidents in that time period on maintenance activities. The corrective actions here were around our lockout tagout program and again, training and the risk assessments. Now I've asked the management of all of our sites to go through the specific details of all of these incidents that we've had since 2015 and ensure that we've put in corrective actions at every site so that we don't have to learn lessons again by an injury where we've already learned a lesson in another site. But these are the summary that I can share with you today. 
uh, going over those injuries over the last few years, the common themes. Procedures and practices, proper PPE should be known for each specific job, documented, training done, and audited. So these are the conditions that should be in place now in all sites. A new employee training process should be in place with particular emphasis on recognition of hazards associated with that specific job. Also the PPE requirements and safe work procedures. So any procedure or process older than 24 months for new employee training should be updated. By now, everyone should have been trained on lockout tagout. I have asked management to do a refresher training before the end of this year on lockout tagout for all employees and specifically a more detailed training on all of our maintenance employees with the emphasis on understanding that lockout tagout is not only for electrical isolation, it's for isolation of stored energy. That energy could be gravity, could be hydraulic, could be pneumatic, could be a spring, any type of stored injury, energy that can be released and cause an in injury. Another takeaway is that each business should have a lone worker procedure. If we have cases where an individual is working by themselves, uh, we need to have procedures in place to ensure that should an incident occur, that employee is not left uh, for a long period of time without being monitored. And then finally, management must have a risk assessment process in place. We should be systematically assessing every piece of equipment and work process, prioritizing the corrective actions, and then tracking those actions to completion. In the category of equipment and tools, these are the things that should be in place today. The proper guarding should be in place. It should be used for any moving production equipment. This is winders, presses, grinders, groovers, lathes, etc. The guarding should never be taken off, should not be disabled. Where hand access to moving parts is possible, light curtains or two handed switch operation should be employed, or if that's not practical, a mitigation plan has to be put in place. Appropriate safety knives and cutters should be in use not standard utility knives or any type of personal knife that the employee may have brought from home or bought at a hardware store of something of that nature. From those incidents, we learned what type of knife, knife is most appropriate. We put that in place in many of the sites. That should be in place in all sites. Specifically around winders, since that's where a number of our injuries occurred, the finger guardian should be installed on all the winders unless there's a specific reason why it cannot be guarded. And then one specific uh, corrective action on a winder is that if you have a knockoff on the winder, it should be painted yellow to highlight the position and awareness. The auditing responsibilities for all of these conditions and procedures ultimately is responsibility of management to provide the safe and work environment, including the equipment and procedures. But also every employee has a responsibility to understand the policies, procedures, and the safe work practices associated with their job. If the conditions that I've just listed in the previous two charts are not met at your site or at your workstation, it is your responsibility to report the issues to management immediately. So what are our next steps when it comes to hand safety? Early in 2019, we'll be rolling out a Plexitalic hand safety initiative to remind every one of us of the potential hazards in our working environments. The new initiative is going to require a pause for each of us to consider hand safety at some important points of our workday, before the start of a new task, before the start of a new day, before the start of a big meeting. The headline for this hand safety awareness program is going to be Take Five. We'll roll out the details of it early in 2019, but the key principles will be take five, meaning five minutes to perform a safety analysis before a new task 
with your lead or supervisor before the start of a job. Five minutes at the beginning of every shift for a toolbox or department safety meeting. Five minutes before a major group meeting for a safety moment. And five seconds before starting a routine task, such as a changeover, a different process, or a, a new task. During that five seconds, we're gonna focus on five things. Is the guarding in place before starting your task? Do you have the appropriate PPE? Sometimes that will be gloves, sometimes it will not. If you're using gloves, are your gloves in the, in the appropriate condition? Be aware of pinch points. Pay attention to where both of your hands are while working before starting the job and be aware of rotating and moving services, surfaces. These will be the five things during that five seconds. The idea here is pretty simple, that we don't get into a routine where we're doing tasks repetitively. We just take a moment, focus on safety, and in particular, because hand safety is so important to Plexitala Group, we're gonna focus on the hands. So our safety moments will transition to take fives. And out in the shop, in our operations, in our maintenance activities, it'll either be five minutes or five seconds before we start new tasks or new jobs. So that will be coming in 2019. Now it's obviously difficult to take questions over the video, but we'll also be rolling this presentation out to all employees in many different formats. So if you're holding a meeting in your site, this is a time for you to ask questions to management, have a discussion about any points you don't understand, and make sure that we have a clear idea of what we're doing to eliminate hand injuries and reach our goal of zero injuries for the Flexitalic Group. Thank you.